And our next guest uh, is being called out from her company is being called out by the SEC to pay a $30 million fine for not registering the offering and sale of its crypto asset staking as a service program. Joining us now is Kraken head of OTC options trading, Jethika Shu. Jethika, thanks for joining us. So we understand that Kraken is going through an entire lawsuit at the moment. You can't really talk about it, but I, I wonder what, what your thoughts are on the issues of uh, staking, which are really getting hammered on right now. Yeah, so with respect to the um, the SEC issue specifically, obviously we neither confirm nor deny the allegations um, related to that. Staking in general, I think, is um, it's an interesting crypto-native fund that we see a lot of our institutional clients have um, an interest in and, and get drawn to. You know, there's different ways to validate a network. Obviously, proof of work is what the Bitcoin network does. Um, other networks, you can delegate your tokens in order to validate transactions, um, which is something sort of unique to a public. And so I don't think that kind of mechanism is going anywhere. There are reasons why people prefer proof of stake networks over proof of work, such as um, ESG and energy efficiency and not um, using as much energy on things like mining. And so, um, so yeah, staking is something that I think is uh, a really interesting, important crypto native aspect of many new and existing protocols. And we'll definitely continue to see it around for a while. Well, from what I understand, the SEC doesn't have a problem with staking as it is if it's directly from the protocol to the user, but if it's through a centralized service and there's something being done with those funds, they, they do have a problem with it. Would Kraken consider making a service that is more direct between consumers and, and protocols to receive rewards from staking products? No, honestly, I can't really speak to this side of things, but both is of um, what the SEC is thinking, as well as um, some of the product decisions and more on the trading side with our trading counterparties. And I can say what we've seen there is that the trading interest remains really strong strong both proof of work networks as well as proof of stake networks um, from different clients who are trying to gain exposure, who are trying to gain directional exposure, um, and who generally view uh, these asset assets with opportunities both for short and long-term investments. And so that's the side of it that I see more and that I'm um, probably more you know, capable of speaking to. So, uh, of course, if you, you, you're running the options desk, and what are you seeing now in terms of options interest? Uh, since uh, definitely since the the fall of FTX, uh, FTX was a big, of course, leveraged uh, uh, platform. People could take on a lot of leverage, um, and that certainly helped with creating some volatility there. Are, are we seeing interest, at least, in hedging any kind of volatility or any kind of plays uh, since November? Since that that sort of leverage has remo been removed from the market, uh, what, what's your take? here now, especially since January when we see prices go up again. Yeah, definitely. So post FTX, we saw about what you would imagine when you tend to see big crashes, whether it's in the crypto market or the traditional market, you get a huge involatility and then prices kind of remain depressed and volatility actually comes low as you start to enter a bear market or as people think about a bear market that's stopping. Um, and then we started the year, uh, uh, second week of the year, we started 16,500 or so um, and had this crazy rally through to, to 24K. And so we're seeing participants express a diverse range of bets now, uh, some that are more directional in terms of trying to use options and just even the natural leverage that are more yield generating because as volatility goes up, it enables more yield to be collected from put selling and call selling. And so the volatility is now back comfortably in the 60s, which is a pretty stable um, for Bitcoin. And so, yeah, it's been an interesting yeah. start to the year, especially for what we would other can, otherwise can be a bear market. So that's Bitcoin. Uh, ETH, of course, and we had just discussed staking with ETH. Uh, has the kind of uh, regulatory crackdown on staking on centralized uh, exchanges uh, from, from offering staking as a service, has that shown itself in the in the ETH markets, particularly in the options market, are we seeing any bifurcation in terms of how the, the markets are moving? Or are they moving in tandem? 
You know, they're moving in tandem right now. Um, and this is a little different from how price action looked in August of last year leading up to the ETH merge. And if you think about the Shanghai upgrade that's coming in March, where, um, you know, we saw back in August, we saw ETH rally to 2K and then the vols really picked up with it. Here, it's a, it's a little bit more muted, uh, both in an absolute level, you know, ETH fall kind of in the 60s, but Bitcoin is sort of in the 60s of uh, just watching them day to day. They're kind of moving together. It does seem like overall the markets move a little more correlated than it was previously. And then, you know, compared to some of the dispersion we've seen among assets in the past. So just turning topics for a moment, there's been some really interesting developments in the NFT market. Um, you know, we have basically a relatively new company, Blur, uh, taking on OpenSea, um, which is the very powerful incumbent. I'm just curious what you think of these developments. Yeah, I mean, so Kraken's definitely invested in the NFT space. We have our own NFT marketplace that's been live. It's something that um, has, you know, taken whether it's on other protocols or even some of what we're seeing in inscriptions. And so um, in the kind of in the bull run, so to speak, I think it's definitely something where we want to be well positioned um, to offer, whether it's on the marketplace side to clients or on the OTC desk, um, tradable exposure as well. How, how confident are you in the uh, in the quality of the the uh, market demand for blurbs uh, tokens and things like that? I and, and also for for just sort of the you know this seems to have just skyrocketed out of nowhere. Um, how confident are you in that in the true interest and the true volume of uh, of everything in this ecosystem? I it, it, you know it just seems that when we see these things skyrocket out of nowhere. Uh, and I'm thinking about, let's say, Terra Luna, uh, it turns out a lot of things were problematic. Uh, what kind of uh, due diligence are you guys doing to make sure that that's not necessarily the case here? And also, uh, just in your confidence and as a trading product that you don't get uh, stuck hol holding the bag should uh, things go wrong? Yeah, so I, look, I won't speak to specific tokens, but in general, I think um, add a little bit less leverage in the space, it's obviously been good for the integrity of price action. If you just look at overall the trading of it, it's much more collateralized. And so that just, you can trust some of the, at least in the derivative space, you know, some of the price action that we a bit more. That said, post FTX, liquidity is not what it used to be. And so every, every time that we get large price moves, they can be real price moves, but I think that um, it's, we're still in an environment where there's much less liquidity, even in the majors, you know, even in Bitcoin and ETH. And so it doesn't take too much to move some of these markets. Um, and so I think you can have a little bit of both effects where it's true, um, there's true supply demand that drives the price, but we are still in a uh, more of a, you know, less liquid environment at the end of the day. In terms of crypto winter, have we reached the bottom and in, in contagion? Are there still headwinds ahead? I mean, I think to some degree, you know, I, I always come back to like a lot of the Bitcoin was sold before these companies went under. You know, they were uh, whether they were selling because loans were getting defaulted or they were selling to get cash to satisfy withdrawals. Um, so some of me always wonders how much is left to be sold. But look, I think we definitely I mean, if you look over the last month, month and a half, um, there's a different kind of risk environment having rallied off of the 16K, 17K level that we were at early in the year. And then I think broadly taking a step back, you know, I've been through other crypto bear markets. And the one thing that makes this different is that a lot of the, especially like institutional demand hasn't waned. There's still interest. There's still institutions that are talking about getting exposure. In the past, where people just completely wrote off the space, didn't even care about it, didn't even want to read about it or think about it, and completely just moved back to the macro mm -hmm. markets or their traditional markets. And so I think because of that, the way that we emerge from this bear market into the bull uh, will look a little bit different. We won't even recognize it when we're in it, and then all of a sudden we'll just be in the next is, bull market. Is there any concern with the regulatory crackdown we're seeing from the SEC and various other regulators that there's going to be a chilling effect in the United States uh, in the crypto industry? I mean, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is, it's been 
long time coming. We've kind of known that the U.S. is always going to take a little bit more of an aggressive view. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, something like Bitcoin is obviously a commodity, and so that has um, it's a little bit more you know defensible from some of the security related regulations, but. Bitcoin, crypto, or global, I think we see that in the last week or so, even with the narrative of Hong Kong making some of these tokens more available for trading, um, opening up Asia a little bit more. And so I think if you look at space generally, um, some of the sp specific aspects of what might happen in U.S. regulation aren't going to impact the market too broadly or in a way that hasn't been telegraphed already. All right, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank that you. was Kraken, head of OTC options trading, Jessica Chu.